And what part did Dorothy's writing play in, in this whole setup? Well, she never saw herself as a writer, and she was quite adamant that um, she didn't want to be seen as a writer because she didn't want to be in any way kind of on Williams, you know, treading in Williams' space. But she started to write when they started to live together. And before they moved to Dove Cottage, she kept a journal when they were living in Elf Foxton in Somerset. She kept a journal which was quite extraordinarily strong. I mean, the writing was very, very powerful. And obviously she'd been praised for this writing. And so when she decided to start writing again, in Dove Cottage. She was expecting praise. She wanted to please William. But what the, the writing takes on a quite an interesting role because she started to write not because they moved to Dove Cottage together, but because their life there would one day end. And she started her journal on the day that William left Dove Cottage. They'd been there for six months. William leaves Dove Cottage to walk to Gallo Hill Farm near Scarborough in order to propose to Mary Hutchinson and Dorothy knows that her days are numbered. Mm. This Eden that she's living in is going, it's going, it's going, to be, it's going to be over quite soon, this particular heaven. And so she decides to write this journal and she says she's going to write it to give William pleasure. But in fact, <laughs> it's a strange form of pleasure mm. because really what she's telling him is how much agony she feels about him going and and that the post hasn't come yet and she's waiting, waiting, waiting for him to come back. And it, I think it's quite an aggressive act, really. And so and then the journal takes on a kind of momentum of its own where it's partly an act of... Um, it's partly elegiac, it's partly a portrait, it's partly still life, it's partly a gift for William, it's partly in a kind of aggressive act towards William. It documents kind of almost accidentally, you know, her gradual breakdown before the marriage. But it also describes the oscillation of power between William and Dorothy, how he has it one day and she has it the next, and he's ill one day and she's ill the next. And so what seems to emerge from the pages of the journal is uh, they're not two separate people, they're one person. Mm. And what <coughs> she's feeling about the marriage is, isn't a kind of common or garden jealousy, it's an incredibly complicated sense of separation. And do you think it's ultimately a futile question to ask whether she lived a life of self-sacrifice or of self-realisation? No, I think that's the big question, really. And I, it's, it's, it's the question I was wondering all the way through writing this book. I, I, just don't, I just don't know. I think... I, I, can't, I can't conclude there. I can't conclude there. Sometimes I think very powerfully it was all self-sacrifice. And at other times I think she had the most extraordinary life. And it was so, so radically different and better in terms of self-realisation than any other woman's life at that time. When you think about what she could have been doing, and she, had she stayed, had she not sort of practically eloped with William, she'd have stayed as a helper in a relations home like Fanny Price in Mansfield Park as a kind of poor relation, looking after babies and teaching Sunday school and being, you know, probably sort of turning down marriage proposals from quite dreary men and leading a very conventional and ordinary life when, in fact, what she had was this, she had a couple of years of extraordinariness. 